this video is going to talk about object inheritance in C Sharp. And this first part of the video is going to talk about kind of organizing our thoughts on how to think about objects and how they inherit. When we talk about inheritance, it's probably easiest to think of a real life situation. So let's say we have a couple of animals that are a little bit different, but still both animals. We could have a dog and a bird. Now, for a dog, there could be the type of the dog. We could record its fur color. We know it barks. A dog can move, and it can make a sound, and it can also wag a tail. I mean, obviously, this is simplified, but these are some things a dog can do. Now, with the bird, there would be a bird type. It would chirp. It can move. And related to the chirp, it can make a sound. And it could also lay an egg. Now, both of these are related. There are some overlaps, but some things are different. So what we can do is make a parent object that can keep track of the things that are the same. So for instance, we could call it animal. So let's look at the things that are similar between the dog and the bird. They both would have a type. So in animal, we could have an attribute called animal type and then we can get rid of the individual ones in dog and bird. The dog and bird also each have their own individual sound, and we could store that in a variable as well. They both move, so we could have a move method in animal instead. And of course, since they move different, a bird would fly and a dog would generally walk or run, we might want to store a movement type. And then both can make a sound. So we'll have that in animal as well. And earlier on, we actually stored the actual sound as an attribute. So now if we look, we have an animal that could be the parent class. And it has animal type, sound, movement type as attributes. And then move and make sound as methods. Dog still has fur color unique to it, and it can wag its tail, and a bird can lay an egg. So when we set this up, we can have three individual classes, and every attribute and method that the parent class has, the child class can have as well. So if dog inherits from animal, it would also have animal type, sound, and movement type, as well as move and make sound. And same thing with bird bird would still have all of those things without having them in the individual class. Now let's set that up in a class diagram just to show how that all works. It's almost looking like this. It's just in a more form formal format. And then my following video will actually implement this. Now I've opened diagrams.net, which also used to be called Draw.io. And it's just a free diagramming tool. You can use other tools to draw this. And um, I have opened up the UML panel, and I can bring up a class. And the way a class diagram works is the top panel is your class name. So the parent class we have is animal. This next section are the attributes. And so there, notice there's a plus sign in front, and that is the accessor. So in a plus is public, a minus is private. In my example today, I'm just going to do everything public. And then we name the name of the field, colon, and then the type. So for instance, and let me open this up a little bit, I would have animal type, and that would be a string. I would have sound, also a string and movement type, and that's a string as well. And then this bottom box, let me click and open that up as well. This is where we store our methods. So the two methods that animal is going to have, now once again, I'm just going to keep everything public to make it easy, our move. You can do a colon and say if it has a return type. So in this case, it'll be void. I'm just going to output to the console and make sound. So 
So that is describing the animal class. Now let's set up the dog and bird. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it. So dog goes up here. And in this case, dog only has one attribute, and that is um, fur color. And that will be a string. And it has one method that's unique to itself, and that is wag tail. And for bird, that's even more simple. I didn't have any um, specific, let's type bird. I didn't have any specific attributes, so I'm just going to delete that. But it does have its own method. And that will be lay egg. So to connect these, I'm going to go ahead and choose a connector. And I can just draw between my objects. And to show it's inheriting, the standard format is that we've got an arrow pointing up. However, we want it to be a white arrowhead. So over in this panel over here, I can change the type of arrowhead. Um, I'll make that this open white arrowhead. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And connect this to bird. And this is just indicating that animal is the parent and bird inherits from animal and dog inherits from animal. Now there's one more thing I'm going to do here. I can instantiate a dog object and I can instantiate a bird object, but there really is no such thing as a plain old animal object. So this is called an abstract class. So what I want to do is take it and make the heading there italic to indicate that. So this is one that you can't make just a plain old animal object just by itself. You either need to make a dog or a bird. So let's go over into Unity and C Sharp and actually implement this, and that might make more sense. But I just wanted to show this is a good way to organize what attributes, what methods go in which class.